welcome. We're talking about pottery and the many, many, many uses of pottery, of clay. Uh, I run workshops where people work with clay. Uh, after a few days, I would usually introduce the wheel and let people experiment on that. But I find that, that um, it creates such excitement there that it's often more productive just to work with clay and your bare hands. And it's a wonderful substance for dreaming with. You know, we dream at night, uh, but in the morning, the dreams just evaporate and you can't remember, or very little. To daydream with clay, to let your imagination drift, uh, especially if you have a theme in your mind, like my, my, the, the journey of my life, or, the obstacles I have faced, a theme like that, and you're daydreaming and just letting your mind run freewheel as you manipulate a lump of clay in great freedom. It's remarkable what comes to be under your hands. People make shapes that surprise themselves. If we give our hands their freedom and we're not trying to plan everything in advance, it's remarkable how creative people discover they are and how revealing to themselves the shapes that come to be under their hands. And I remember, I'll tell you one briefly, I remember once giving a group of people a lump of clay each and I said, make a symbol of the path that has been your life, your life's journey. And I said no more because you don't want to suggest things, let them discover things. So uh, people set to work and rolled out lumps of clay. And I remember a woman, a farmer's wife, as it happened, uh, beside me at the table. And she rolled up her sleeves and in a very business-like way, she set to this lump of clay, and rolled out a long uh, strip of it, like a path and then put a few turns on it, and then a few lumps of clay, big and small, here and there along the path. So these, it was obvious enough, I suppose, were the obstacles in her path. And the others, she was finished then, and the others were working away. And then after a few minutes, she started again, and she removed all the lumps of clay, big and small, took up the path that she had laid down and put it aside and then carefully put back the lumps of clay, big and small, in the same arrangement as before. And I was wondering, wonder what this is, what's going on? And I never quiz people about it, but I always give them an opportunity to talk about it if they want. And when she talked about it, she said something so profound, I have never forgotten it. And that must be 30 years ago, she said, I realized that the obstacles were the path. We're deceived when we use the word path because there's no path other than your actual experience, what you face day by day, that's the path. The word path occurs in a dictionary and every word in a dictionary, every noun that's described there in a word is perfect. The word tree, Oh, there's no mention of cankers or, or branches falling off in a storm. No, every tree in the dictionary is perfect. So the abstract word is perfect. And path, the path of my life, it gives, it gives a false hope that everything would be smooth and a curve in it just so I won't get too bored. Well, we were never promised anything like that. And that woman deconstructed, if that's the word to use, that idea of path. She got rid of it and she put back the obstacles. She said, this was my life's path, what I faced, what I came through. Very profound from a lump of clay. Thank you.